Hello. Good morning, Santiago. Hello, Liliana. How's it going? Are you going well? How about you? I'm doing really well, thank you. Oh, okay. Nice. So we also have Jessica. Jessica. Hello. And hello, how's it going? Very well. How about you? I'm doing well, thank you. We also have scheduled this session with Karen. Let's give her a minute to see if she arrives. Otherwise, we're going to start. Jessica, just a heads up. Uh, we're with Liliana. So she's <laughs> okay. going to be an observer. So she's not going to participate in the exercise mm -hmm. that we have. Okay. Let me just prepare the presentation. One minute, please. Okay, teacher. Okay, seems like Jessica couldn't make it. But Jessica, could you please tell me if you see what's on my screen? Uh, yes, teacher, I see the screen. Great. So today's topic is going to be about that. That is how to tell a story. So what's the story? It's a set of events about the past that we're telling in the present. It can be okay. memory. It can be, uh, maybe you, you, you like a movie and you're telling me about that movie or a book. So that's a story. For the warm-up, I'd like to ask you, please, Jessica, what are some of the situations where you need to tell a story? Mm. Oh. Let me think. <laughs> yeah, for a moment, please. In some cases, um, in situations uh, with our, our friends, mm -hmm. yes. Friends. Uh, uh, in addition, uh, in the girls, uh, for instance, uh, in the university, uh, sometimes uh, request us uh, to tell a story, anecdote. So for educational I, purposes. I had no ideas. <laughs> no, that was very good. And here, you also have a clue. Maybe maybe these are two friends, or maybe this is a boss, or this is this is a boss, and and they're maybe telling a story. So, these are some of the situations where you tell a story. When you're talking to your friends, you normally tell stories, giving your opinion in a book or a movie. That's all review. That's also kind of a story because you're given the plot of that book or that movie. Talking about an anecdote. So when you're t telling me about your past and some of the actions that you did, that's an anecdote. That's also a story that you're going to tell me. Uh, doing an interview, for example, when, when you have to apply for a job, they're going to ask you about your past. Uh, about maybe your career, what are your hobbies, and you kind of have to tell a story for those interviews. Also, when telling a joke, when you want to tell a joke, that's basically a story. And finally, reporting to officers. So what is that? Let's say that we were very unlucky one day, and we had to talk to the police. They're gonna maybe ask us, hey, what happened here? What happened yesterday? So, we're gonna have to tell them a story. So, those are 
some of the situations where you need to tell a story. Now let's go with the structure of a story. We have beginning, continuation, interruption, and ending. Uh, for each of this, we have very special words that's gonna let us find out that you're talking about the beginning or that you're talking about the continuation and so on. I have marked some of these words in blue and some of this in red, we're gonna see that why. And this, and at the end, uh, finally, eventually at the end, I haven't marked them in blue because they're very easy to spot. So let's start with the beginning. We have words like first, like for example, first we were together. Uh, we also have yesterday, this is a time marker. We can say this week, this month, last week, any time that you want is going to let us know that you're talking about the beginning. For example, yesterday at my uncle's house, um, I did this and that. I can also talk about a place to let you know that the beginning of my story, like we were at the begin, we were at the, we were at the beach. Um, I can also talk about a situation, like if I'm sick, when I was sick, that's also gonna let me know that you're talking about the beginning. Now, with the continuation, this is probably the most important of them all, because when we are telling a story, we're telling a set of actions. So, action number one, action number two, action number three, and so on. So, continuations are special words that we have so that we can connect action number one with action number two, action number three with action number four. We have words like so, so Aunt Marie showed up. This is very similar to then, then Aunt Marie showed up. After that, this is also a word that we use for continuation. After that, we went upstairs. Also, also Mark Michael started coughing. Up to that point, this is a group of words that we use for continuation. Up to that point, no one said a single word. And as you can see, these words also s help us set the context. So what's going on in our story? We do it with these words. That's the context. Interruptions. This is also called the climax because it's the most important event of our story and it's usually something that nobody was expecting. So we have words like suddenly, all of a sudden, then. I have marked this in then with red because in continuation we have also then. But in interruptions, if we use then, we have to use another type of tone when we speak. And Give me just one minute and I'm gonna go in more detail with that. Finally, we have ending. We have words like finally, eventually, at the end, and in conclusion. So let me give you an example of that. Let's make a very short story. Mm, Yesterday, at, at my uncle's house, uh, no, okay. let me start that again. I'm going to give you an example, so don't worry about participating okay. right now. Okay. So, yesterday, I was at my uncle's house. This is the beginning. Continuation. Then, Aunt Marie showed up. Interruptions. All of a sudden, it started raining. So, nobody was expecting the rain. That's an interruption. An ending. Let's say, and finally... Uh, we decided to come back home because nobody wanted to get wet. So let me also give you an example about then, of the change of tone. Yesterday I was at my uncle's house, then Aunt Marie showed up, but then it started raining, so nobody wanted to get wet. Finally everyone decided to get back home. 
you see how I changed the tone of them here it was a little bit higher it's gonna let me know that's an interruption all right so that is the structure of a story of all of this I need you please to remember continuation because this is what most people get wrong these are the, the words that are most important when you tell a story. Uh, beginning is kind of easy because you can say just first. Um, for the end, then we just say finally. So let's keep it simple. Beginning, first, continuation, then interruption, all of a sudden, suddenly, ending, finally. All right. So let's make an exercise using those words. Uh, Jessica, I'm gonna please ask you to tell me an anecdote. Make sure to include the words that let us know about the beginning, the continuation, the interruption, and the ending. I'm gonna go back to the slide so it's easier for you. And when you're ready, tell me your anecdote. Okay. One moment, please. Give me a minute. Yeah, I'm gonna give you two minutes for that. Okay, good. Thank you. Right. You ready, Jessica? Yes, teacher. Excellent. So tell me the, <laughs> the, the anecdote. Okay, teacher. Um, uh, when uh, I, was, I was in the high school, mm -hmm. uh, my, my classmates and me uh, with Uh, we were in the classroom. Uh, we we said in the in the barroom in the in the class. Uh, uh, um, something made in paper. Uh, uh, for that uh, we we scared a lot. Uh, we uh, so, uh, some people starting uh, to shout. Yes. Uh, mm, then uh, we 
uh, we take it to the garbage. Uh, mm, uh, and they eat uh, with mm, mm, we back here to the class uh, mm, uh, with uh, tranquility. Uh, Yes, maybe. Mm -hmm. That's the end of your story? Yes, teacher. Okay, it's don't worry about that. <laughs> so the idea here was of you to is to use at least one word of each of these steps. So let's make it simple. You have to use first. Okay. Then you have to use maybe then. And then use suddenly. And finally use finally. Okay, teacher. So make sure to use all of these four words in your anecdote. So let's try again. Remember to use first, then suddenly and finally. Okay, uh, first um, we say it, uh, something maybe in paper in the class uh, with my peers. Uh, then a uh, with uh, we were um, with that uh, seeing uh, what is um, what. Uh, sorry, what goes? Uh, suddenly, uh, mm, uh, with, uh, we scare a lot. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yes, that's good. Uh, finally, with, uh, we take it. To the bar garbage a la basura. Aha, uh -huh, garbage. Yes. And finally. Mm, finally, finally, uh, we uh, we we were uh, mm, very uh, very quiet, very quiet, and uh, to back here to the class. Okay, that was much better. You use all of these four words, and me as a listener, uh, it was easier for me to understand your story. So that's why these words are so important because they let me know when was the beginning, what happened next, the continuation. Uh, when that when you got scared, it was the interruption, and you use suddenly. And finally, uh, that word finally let me know about the ending of your story. So that was much better. Okay, okay, let's continue. Also, when we tell stories, we have a couple of useful tenses. Um, one of them is the past simple. That's when we set uh, a list of activities. For example, one, then two, then three, then four. That would be like, first I woke up, then I took a shower, after that I had my breakfast. So you see it's one after the other, it's in chronological order. That's why we use the past simple. Also, when we tell stories, we use the past continuous. That's when we are using uh, markers of time for example yesterday this week this month or we can also use uh, also another action to set a marker of time for example when Michael called me I was taking a shower so you see two actions but one is setting uh, the marker of the time then we also have 
present simple. This one is kind of hard because uh, it's used to give a better sense of representation. So let's say you're listening to a story and you feel like you're there. It's such an amazing story that you actually feel there. And that's usually because they use the present simple. For example, let me just go back here. And let me make up a quick story. So f yesterday I was at my uncle's house. Then Aunt Marie showed up. All of a sudden, uh, let me think about that. All of a sudden, this big man shows up. So this big man shows up. You see here, I'm using the present simple to, to give you a better sensation of reality of what happened. So yesterday I was at my uncle's house and Aunt Marie showed up. Suddenly, this big man shows up. And finally, uh, we, we got scared, so we got back in home. Something like that. It's just a quick story. That's how we use the present simple. Um, I have another couple of examples here. Using the present simple together with the past tenses. Let's focus on this one. So, I was swimming, having fun, enjoying the water, when this big shark comes at me. I got scared, but I survived. So, when this big shark comes at me, this is present simple. Another example. I went to the park, bought an ice cream, rode my bike home, when I suddenly hear the engine of a car. He ran over me. So, uh, again, this is where you can find the present simple. And you see how it gives me a better sense of reality, of a more vivid story? Vivid story. Okay, is that clear for you? Yes, teacher. Excellent. So remember about continuation. These are just a couple of words I've gotten together for you to remember continuation. You can write it down on a paper, whatever you want, because we're going to be using this to make another exercise. Uh, teacher, and sound, what is the meaning in Spanish? Sound. Sound. Para continuar? This is like etc. Et, et etc. Etc. Okay. Mm -hmm. Because I, I here I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven, seven words of continuation. But you can find 100 or 200 words of continuation. So write them down and let me know when you're ready. Okay, Great. We're gonna uh, do this filling the gaps activity using the words of continuation. So let's look at the first sentence. I was worried about my husband. He had not contacted me. So what mm -hmm. word can I use here? Okay. Mm. 
of those words that you just wrote? Take your time. Uh, yesterday was could be. Now remember that we can yeah. only use these words. It might be okay. so, then, until, until that, after that, also, after that point. Uh, the okay, answer teacher. is here on some of these words. Okay, teacher. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I was worried about my husband. Mm -hmm. uh, he had not contacted me. So. Uh, so let's try to see if so works. I was worried about my husband, so he had not contacted me. Mm, no, it doesn't make so much sense. Okay, try another one. Up to the point. Let's, let's try to see that. Okay, give me just one second. Up to that point. So I was worried about my husband. Up to that point, he had not contacted me. Yes, that's good. It yes. makes sense. Okay, teacher. So we have action one. I was worried about my husband. He had not contacted me. Let's call that action two. Up to that point, is helping me link one and two. Two. You see that? Okay. Now let's try with this sentence. Mary went to school. She came back home. Uh, after that. Mary went to school after uh -huh. that. Let me see. Mary went to school. After that, she came back home. Yes, that works. What? Tell me another word that works here. Mm, okay. Then. Could be. Mary went to school. Then she came back home. Yeah, it also works. <laughs> so you see, we can also hundreds of of con continuation words, and they're gonna work. Now let's go okay. with the third sentence. Okay. Oscar didn't return his book. The library made him a call. Uh, until that? Oscar didn't return his book. Until that, the library made him a call. Yes, that works. Until that. Or we can say also, until that happened, the library made him a call. Tell me another word we can use here to connect these two okay, ideas. Okay, teacher. So. So, this one is actually better because it's talking about a reason. So this one works fine, but this one is a little better. Oscar didn't okay. return his book, so the library made him a call. Very good. Now let's go with this one, Angela. Angela was abroad. She came back to her country. Okay. Could be after that as well? After that, let me see. Angela was abroad. After that, she came back to her country. Yes, that works. After that. Or then. Then, let's see. Then. Angela was abroad. Then she came back to her country. Yes, works very good. And let's do this one. Oliver. Turned on the TV, he heard the news about his city. Mm, okay. Uh, 
a song or up to a point? So, so Oliver turned on the TV so he heard the news about his city. Yes, this one works. What was the other one? Up to that point? Yes, teacher. Up, up to that. Okay, I cannot fill this this in, but you understand. Oliver turned on the TV. Up to that point, he heard the news about his city. It doesn't work because here we're talking about one time, and here we're talking about the other time. So, so makes much more sense since we're talking about uh, a continuation of this action. Here we have action number one, action number two. If we say up to that point, it will be like continuation number two. So two and two doesn't work. All right. And the final one. I thought I was wrong about the exam. I read the answers. Mm, okay, teacher. It could be the until that. Until that. I thought I was wrong about the exam. Until that. Well, yes, it's until. Yeah. But we cannot say that because this phrase is also working as that already. So we have that already. We cannot use that until. If I say, I thought I was wrong about the exam until I read the answers. That is, that's, that is until? Funny. Yes, just until. Only. Okay. If I, if I wouldn't have this, let's imagine this is not here I can say until that because I'm not I'm not specifying what that was all right okay now let's test ourselves for this I'm gonna give you a this is a comic it has around four to six um, scenes for I don't want you to tell me about the conversation I don't want you to feel this but I want you to tell me about each scene let's say one two three and how are you connect number one with number two maybe you can use then maybe you can use up up until that uh, you can say until that up until okay, that. Teacher. Is that clear for you or do you want me to give you an example? It's clear, teacher. Excellent. So take around, let's say, five minutes is good. And yes, teacher, it's good. And you're going to tell me when you're ready. Great. Okay, teacher. Thank you. Um, of all the um, steps that we have, let me just remind you here, you have to use first maybe then okay. uh, suddenly suddenly this one is important make sure to include that okay and finally okay teacher great
uh, finished teacher. Great. Okay, so tell me about Okay, it. teacher. Okay, uh, first, uh, I can see uh, a class, uh, maybe an uh, informatic uh, class. Uh, there is a student uh, with his teacher. Uh, the student uh, who is in the computer, uh, maybe he's... Um, uh, He's doing an investigation, uh, something like that. Mm -hmm. uh, then, uh, then uh, I can see the teacher who is speaking with his students. Uh, maybe uh, the teacher um, who is doing an uh, oral exam. I don't know, I suppose. <laughs> Uh, maybe um, uh, suddenly uh, the teacher is uh, checking the notes, uh, the grades. Uh, uh, after that, uh, the teacher looks very surprised. After that, mm -hmm. yes, yeah. um, and finally, uh, the teacher. He's speaking with his student. Uh, maybe the teacher is um, giving some recommendation yeah. about it, some uh, some feedback, maybe. Mm -hmm. Okay, that was very good. Uh, you, you, you see, you use first, then after that, you also use suddenly and finally. When you use this, it was very clear you were telling a story and then you made something really interesting and is that you told me that story entirely in present uh, simple present simple that is completely fine because well I just asked you about giving me a, a story about this comic so it's completely fine but it's also useful that you uh, tell your stories using the past tenses. This was very good. It works, but uh, maybe when you have to do an exam, uh, oral exam about English, you're going to ask you about past tenses. So let's use the past tenses on this next story. Uh, forget up again about this. Uh, speech bubbles we're gonna try to make a story let me give you an example of that I can say first Michael and Juliet were planning to go to the cinema then they went to the ticket store to get uh, the tickets but the ticket salesman just uh, told Juliet that they're out of tickets. They just sold their last ticket. There are no more tickets right there. Um, suddenly, Michael comes in to see what's going on and see if they can give you, they can give Juliet a ticket. Finally, uh, Michael and Juliet get upset, but Michael tells Juliet, don't worry about that. Uh, Maybe we cannot see the movie on the cinema, but we can see it on Netflix. Something like that. Okay, let's try that again with you, but with this uh, comic. This one is a little bit easier. Okay, Juliet? So you can see first. You can use then. Suddenly. And finally, okay, it's so take a couple of minutes to do that and tell me okay, when you're ready. Teacher. 
Ok, teacher, thank you. Mm, in the past, right? Yes, you can use uh, past and present. Okay. But try to use mostly past. Okay. Remember, it's not a mistake if you use present, it's completely fine. But I just want to see how you do doing with the past. Finish, teacher. Great. So tell me about that story. Okay, teacher. Uh, first, uh, I can see it, uh, the children uh, uh, who is uh, who was sorry uh, saving uh, maybe uh, some things in on a bat on a boat. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, after that. Uh, mm, his dad arrived uh, there mm -hmm. and mm, asked it for explanation about that. Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, then uh, the children uh, don't mind 
uh, the opinion of his father. Uh, um, uh, for that, uh, he he took uh, the teens mm -hmm. uh, on a boat, and finally he he goes. Mm. Yes, uh, he goes with with teens. Okay. Finally, he went with him. Let's say yes. that was very good. You use first and then finally, but you didn't use suddenly. Let's let's try to make up a uh, suddenly right now. So let's think. Um, and suddenly, let's call him Jacob. And suddenly Jacob wants to help his dad with the papers of his office. So I just used suddenly because the dad was not expecting Jacob, uh, was not expecting the help of Jacob. Okay, that's just an example. But you did very good because you used the past and you also used the present. That is completely fine, very good. I see that... Uh, you understood quite well this lesson. So let's make a summary. When we tell stories, we have to make sure that we need to use the beginning, the continuation, the interruptions, and the ending. The interruption is also called the climax. Beginning. So what words do we have for beginning? We have first, we can have a situation or time continuation we can use then after that after that very well what else mm, until next? that next until that yes Okay, how about interruptions? What words do we use? Uh, suddenly. Suddenly. All of a sudden. Sudden. Okay, how about ending? Uh, and the end, finally. At the end. And finally. Okay, you did very well today, Jessica. That will be pretty much everything for today. I appreciate your participation and I hope to see you the next time. Thank you, teacher. The topic is very interesting. All right, thank you. And also thanks to Lydia for being here. I'm gonna see you maybe the next time. Have a nice day. Well, Bye, guys. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.